So when we cut our hand or we get some type of injury, the body is designed to repair and kind of renew itself. So in this video, I want to help you understand the importance of digestion in that body's ability to repair and rebuild itself. Not just if you have a wound that you can see, but even if you have like structures or issues in the body that have become damaged or even just worn out from using them too much, the body really needs to be able to rebuild and repair those. And if it can't, that can really accelerate your time frame when you're going to need to use one of those rascal scooters in the grocery store. Beep, beep, beep. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now there's just times when the body needs to heal. When I was in the 8th grade, I broke this arm. The day I got this cast off, I broke this arm. That's just the kind of kid I was. So it's very important for the body to be able to heal, rebuild, and repair properly. So when we're looking at this aspect with digestion, we need to understand for the body to be able to heal and repair, it needs tools to do that. It's not just going to use magic. And a really important one is amino acids and collagen. These are kind of like the building blocks that the body uses to rebuild these tissues that have been damaged. And we access this when we consume protein. And there's also a lot of vitamins and minerals that are important, like zinc. Zinc has a role in protein and collagen synthesis, as well as tissue growth and healing. And zinc is also important for the immune system. And we have to keep in mind that a lot of times the immune system is really this whole system that's doing the rebuilding and repairing. A lot of times when we have an injury, the immune system comes and first cleans it up. Like that's very common to see like a bacterial infection in a cut that you get because that tissue has become weakened. It's more susceptible to attack. So the immune system comes that first cleans it up and then the second stage is the repairing or rebuilding type thing. So zinc is very important in all of that kind of stuff. Now vitamin A helps stimulate collagen and iron helps to kind of carry oxygen to that tissue so that it can heal correctly. Vitamin C is used in pretty much every repair type process that the body has, along with the immune function, and we get that from our food. There's only a few mammals that don't produce their own vitamin C. They have to get it from their food, and we're one of those that get ripped off a little bit. Vitamin D and calcium are a really big deal, especially in this whole immune response where the body's saying, hey, something's wrong here, we really need to fix this and vitamin D and calcium are really big players in that. We'll talk more about that in just a second. But when we're looking at all of these things, we need to understand that these don't just show up. Again, it's not magic. The body needs to access these things from the foods that we consume. Now, in order to access the nutrients that are in that food, we need to be able to break down that food. So a lot of times when there's digestive malfunctions, now we're not really digesting the food like we might think we are. A lot of people put food in, poop comes out, everything must be working correctly. But that's not always the case. We need to have things like stomach acid working correctly so that we can acidify that food and start that breakdown process. And then we also need bile coming out of the gallbladder to help us emulsify or break down our dietary fats. And without proper bile levels, we can't access fat-soluble vitamins like A, right there, D, and E and K too. All those are very important as well. So there's usually malfunctions in either someone is not making enough stomach acid. That's very common to see. Millions of people today turn off stomach acid on purpose. Uh, it's also very common to see bile become too thick and sticky to flow correctly. And then that bile won't come down and help us emulsify those dietary fats and access those fat-soluble vitamins. And also, when these actions are taking place, it also triggers other factors of the digestive process, like the pancreas shooting out this bicarb that helps neutralize these acids with the bile, along with digestive enzymes that help us break down things even further and access more of those nutrients, minerals, vitamins, amino acids that are found in that food. It's kind of this process of things first acidifying and then meeting with these agents that help to alkalize those things that kind of creates this sizzle that really helps us bust the food apart at that chemical level and get all of those nutrients out of that food.
And then there's all this action taking place down here and in here as well in the large intestine where we're supposed to have good gut flora that kind of help us get more of the nutrients out of that food. Things that we can't break down, sometimes they can. So the malfunctions that we see are either someone not having enough stomach acid. If you don't have enough stomach acid, you can't break protein down into amino acids. Now your body doesn't have these building blocks that it needs to rebuild or repair things. If someone doesn't have bile flowing correctly, well, now they can't emulsify those dietary fats and access these fat-soluble vitamins that are so important. And if someone has a bacterial overgrowth, a lot of times we'll have like a lot of bacteria here in the stomach or the small intestine where it really shouldn't be. And if there's an overgrowth there, our immune system has to put effort towards getting rid of those bad guys. And if effort is going towards doing that, now the immune system is occupied. Not only can it not race off to fix this scratch a person might have on their finger, but they might be using a lot of these nutrients like zinc or the vitamin C and these other things that are needed to fight off these invaders so they might not have enough left over to do those repair type processes. The body might be prioritizing this infection that a person has over kind of rebuilding or repairing structures on a tissue that was damaged with a scratch or something like that. And what can even magnify that more is if somebody has like an overgrowth in the stomach, sometimes the waste that they put out can be alkaline, which is alkalizing that stomach even more and reducing your ability to acidify that food even more. So now a person can't break their food down to get these nutrients that the body needs to not only heal itself and allow the immune system to function, but also can't get the nutrients that it needs to be able to make the hydrochloric acid, stomach acid that it's supposed to make in the stomach. The body needs resources to do that too. So a person can get stuck in this cycle of not having the resources it needs to make enough hydrochloric acid and then not be able to break down the food to get those resources out of the food. And that just gets stuck in that broken digestion cycle for years or decades. So if a person's dealing with any type of digestive symptom at all, it's very likely that they are reducing their body's ability to heal and repair things properly. So any digestive symptom at all is a sign that one of these systems is not working correctly. Either stomach acid or bile flow or there's some type of overgrowth creating trouble and restricting some of these other functions from triggering into action. We talk about digestion in a lot of videos. I'm not going to go over how to fix those things in this video, but if you're having issues, my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, chapters three and four kind of walk you through figuring out which aspects of digestion are not working correctly and what steps you can take to improve those. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'll put a link in the description below so you can get that whole thing totally for free. And then you can just jump to chapters three and four and figure out what needs to be improved in your situation. So those are the things that we need to consider about the digestive process when it comes to the body's ability to heal and repair itself. Now there's other factors and I have another video that digs a little bit deeper into other issues like understanding how this vitamin D and calcium are important to even let the immune system know that there's a problem. We talk a little bit about an imbalance that kind of restricts the body's ability to repair and reheal itself and other things that can restrict the immune system from functioning like high sugar levels. So if you want to dig a little bit deeper into that, you can jump over right now and check out our video on slow wound healing. I can't wait to hear about your results.